you guys doing? Hope everything is well, well, well. So, I should turn this down a little bit. Hope everything is well with you guys. Yeah, I was incognito last night because I wasn't feeling tip top. I was actually in a mad uh, healing situation, but we'll get into that in a second. So, yeah, thanks for joining the stream. And if you can hit the thumbs, I would appreciate that. You know how it is for the algorithms. The algos require it. So, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Steph and uh, Code Log and Prosper. I borrowed this from Star Trek. All right, let me jump right into it so that it replays a bit better for people and then we'll do the Q&A and I have a few other things I can bring up. So number one, anti-fragile developers. Now there's anti-fragile software. It's a different thing. Anti-fragile anti, anti software is software that uh, can scale automatically. Think AWS. Has being able to adjust. So I'm going to talk about that in terms of you as a developer, I'll give you a few bullet points that you can ponder. Let me get this rid of this thing here. And then uh, we'll do some Q&A. So sound cut out. Can you guys hear me? Oh, let me do the Ruby, 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 Ruby. Can you hear me? Let me know. Uh, can you hear me? Just let me know. Let me know if the sound is good. Then I'll jump. Volume is gone. You can't hear me now? Sound, sound, sound. Oh, okay, hold on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Test, test, test. Let me know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We're going to wait. I can hear you. So people can hear me now? All right. So, okay, we're back. Okay, cool about that. A uh, little technical error. Oh, is that... Uh... Okay, it's fixed. Could you be repeat? Testing, testing. I just want to make sure everything's cool. Everything's cool. All right. I think we're good. So, uh, sorry for missing yesterday. I was uh, I, I was in a... Uh, I wasn't able to make it because I was just dealing... just late with things. So, anyway. It was off for like 10 seconds. Whoa, okay. Loud and clear now. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I think I know what happened. What are you going to do? So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm going to jump into the subject, okay? So the subject is anti-fragile developer. Now, you, pro you may have heard of anti-fragile software, and, that, and this is a bit different. Well, it is different. Anti-fragile developer is, I'm going to teach you what it is to be an anti-fragile developer in terms of raw coding skills and personal skills. Anti-fragile software is basically software that uh, can scale and uh, dynamically. It's all. It's a lot of it's based on cloud stuff. Um, Anti-fragility comes from this author uh, Nassim Taleb. He wrote a book about it. Anti-fragile systems, systems that are not fragile, meaning not brittle, not weak. They're flexible. They're malleable. They can adjust to the situation. Good software. Well, you can get that with software using modern cloud hosting. As I said in previous streams, uh, the big advance in the last 10 years in software development is not the actual software itself. It's the infrastructure around the software, DevOps, and it is the, um, of course, the, uh, the, the virtual private hosting, uh, the, the cloud hosting. The cloud technologies, uh, once I got, got my head wrapped around cloud, that was really uh, mind-bending for me. In the old days, for example, if you needed to scale, you had to engineer uh, scaling into, you had to architect that into your software. These days, using uh, an AWS or an Azure or Google Cloud, you can get auto-scaling. It's pretty good. All right, so I think everybody can hear me. All right, all right. Uh, I appreciate that, Zero. I appreciate that. I'm glad I could help. So there you go. So let's jump into anti-fragile developer. So 
First thing, anti-fragile developer writes code that isn't fragile. Uh, second thing, you as a coder are not fragile. So let me just dive into that. In terms of code, I've talked about this before. The holy grail of software development is to write uh, decoupled, fine-grained code. So what's decoupled code? Code that is uh, not dependent or at least less dependent on other chunks of code. That's why, for example, I'm not a fan at all of inheritance. For me, inheritance and object-oriented programming should only be used in a very limited way. Very limited way. And um, if you want to take advantage of what the, the original intent of inheritance is, you want to use something, uh, you want to use an abstract, abstract class, they call it, or interfaces. That's actually the best way. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit high level here. So when you write code, you want to write code that's decoupled and fine-grained. Decoupled means that it's not dependent on all kinds of other code. So you can't, if you, let's say you had a piece of code here, and it was dependent on a code here, code here, code here, and somebody changed code here and it breaks this, that's pretty fragile code. Your code should be able to operate fairly well independently of things around it. That's the whole point of object-oriented programming. That's one of the big advantages. The next thing you gotta do to keep your code anti-fragile, you wanna write fine grain code, fine grained, small grains. You don't wanna have huge blocks and blobs of code, big functions, they call them God functions or God methods. A method is a function, a function is a method. Uh, in object-oriented programming, they use the word method. In non-object-oriented programming, they'll call it functions. It's the same thing. Um, and all function or a method is, is just a chunk of code in a package, right? So it just allows you to easily organize code. So when you're writing these code packages, these functions or these methods, you want to keep them fine-grained. You want to keep them so that they uh, are not huge and complex. Huge, complex code is very fragile code. You'd want to avoid that like the plague because in software development, um, in software development, most of the work in any successful software is in the updates and the upkeep. So you gotta have simple anti-fragile code. So let's get into being anti-fragile as a developer. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you wanna be open to uh, new technologies and new languages. Something I talk about, it's like my Ruby joke where I make the Ruby jokes. I'm not actually, actually, I'm not actually making fun of Ruby. I'm making fun of people who care or become married to a language or technology. It's cool and it's okay to have a favorite language. That's, that makes sense. It's cool to prefer Tailwind over, let's say, uh, Bootstrap. That's cool. But you should have an open mind and realize that all these different languages, whether it be PHP, Python, Java, C Sharp, not Ruby, Ruby is the exception, never written Ruby. Uh, whatever language you're going to use, even Ruby, um, you don't want to be, you want to be agnostic about it. You want to be totally neutral. Don't care. Because you'll find that particular jobs, uh, a particular language will be better at it versus uh, something else. So, you know, if I was going to do AI as an example, I'd probably do it in Python. If I was going to develop anything for uh, that would interface with Microsoft products, I'm definitely going to be doing that in C Sharp. Just as an example. So you want to be neutral to the languages and the technologies. Don't become a zealot in that regard. Realize that professional developers, you may have a favorite, and you may be working in one technology for a while, but professional developers are very common for them to move one from technology A to B to C and so on. Uh, number two, um, in terms of your personality, you know, this is scares a lot of nerds. When you become a developer, when you're in the workforce, you got to be able to interact with other people. Um, the number two thing that recruiters look for in developers is their ability to react and interact with other people successfully. So uh, that means having a little empathy for others. Uh, but in terms of you and being anti-fragile, don't be offended by things. Try to get rid of being offended. When you're offended by things, it's simply because you feel threatened for some reason. You got to get rid of that. You got to get rid of that. If you're somebody who's easily offended, uh, you have to let that go, man, because 
it's going to, first of all, it's going to, it's going to wreck your health. It's not going to be good. It's going to give you stress you don't need. And it doesn't get you where you want to go. So, you, A, you don't want to be offended by things. You want to be calm. You want to be self-confident, though. But you also have to be humble. Anti-fragile developers have these emotional, these psychological qualities. That's why I put out my course, Lizard Wizard, links below, to teach you about the operating systems of your brain. Once you understand how the operating systems work, you'll be able to more effectively manage your moods and so forth and become less fragile. Remember, if you get angry at stuff, something frustrates you, something makes you uh, cower, that's fragile. You want to be stoic. You want to be, you know, it doesn't mean without emotion, but it means you want to be relaxed, calm, and uh, be able to face things uh, accordingly. That makes you less fragile. So the last point I want to put in, in terms of you being less fragile as a developer, uh, you want to be in shape physically. You want to be healthy as you can. So uh, get get into BMI, get the body fat percentage down, eat healthy, you know, moderate exercise, yada, 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 yada. I know this sounds weird on a coding channel. Why is he talking about this? Trust me, when you're sitting at the desk, you know, they say like sitting at a desk is a new smoking in terms of the detriment to your health. You have to implement healthy habits. You can start off by just walking for an hour a day, doing some push-ups, make sure you drink water, make sure you have good food. Because if you're eating bad food and so on, you can get away with it when you're younger. I'm telling you, as you get older, this stuff creeps up on you. And uh, you don't want to be uh, you know, too fat and overweight because it's just going to slow you down, man. It's going to slow down your cognitive cap cap capability. You're going to be less comfortable sitting. You're going to get tired more often. You're going to be less productive. So if you want to be less fragile as a developer, you want to be resilient, you got to have the emotional component. You have to have the physiological component. And, of course, you have to have the uh, intellectual component, which is understanding how to write clean code. Now, if you want to learn how to write clean code, I have a link below to a book on refactoring. There's one for Java and there's one for JavaScript. They're universal. Refactoring is a process of cleaning up your code, optimizing your code. So that's what you got to do. All right. That's the end of that subject. So I'm going to go into a few things, um, and then I'll answer some of the questions. So... In terms of improving some of your skills, here's one book I recommend to everybody. You can get it on Amazon. I think there's a link below. Writing well, being a great or a good writer will make you a far better developer because you got to be able to communicate with people. When you can write well, it usually means you can speak well. It will help you anyway. So Learn to Write Well is a famous book. Uh, even if you did just part of it, it would improve your skills. That's a book. If you want to understand a little bit more about your own motivations and why you do things you do, check out this book, classic book. I've had this book for, I don't know, three, mid decades. So there's a great book, The Naked Ape. Again, link below. That will help you understand what's going on up here. If you're a beginner to web design, I have my book, Web Design Start with Steph. So you can still get it on Amazon. I wrote it years back, but it's evergreen. It covers the basics, HTML5, CSS3, the web. You understand the infrastructure around the stuff. So there are my book suggestions for today. Oh, I, just, I got something interesting today. So I'm an Amazon guy. I'm a Prime guy. So I got this today. This, they shipped me this. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a water ionizer or something. But look what they shipped it in. <laughs> they shipped it in the uh, Power of the Rings box. There you go. Power of the Rings. Amazon. So I think this is starting either tonight or tomorrow. Lord of the Rings prequel. Uh, the, I think they spent more money on this than any other, uh, any other series in history. So I don't know if it's going to be any good, but uh, I thought this was fun. Funny, at least. Surprised to see. So what else are we going to do? All right, um, next things. So I always, I don't always, I bring out an album. So here's a, an album for you guys. Uh, love this album. It's very psychedelic. It's a big group from the 80s. The lead singer's dead. But uh, this is their psychedelic album, non-commercial. If you like Pink Floyd, you're, you're going to like this. So Talk Talk, Spirit, 
of Eden. So I recommend uh, you take a look at that. That's a very cool album. And this is, of course, the, uh, the vinyl. There you go. So that's for the psychedelic lovers out there. And if you want to rock out, this is probably one of the best live albums of all time, in my opinion. Nirvana Live at Reading. You can get this on uh, YouTube, of course. It's a great show, great performance. Uh, I think he did this about a year before he died. Live at Reading. A Reading. Reading. <laughs> Reading, I think it is. I pronounce, I mispronounce that all the time. So anyway, there he goes. Nirvana. You can get this on YouTube. Great album. Of course, I got the vinyl. I was big into my vinyl in the day. So there you go. All right, let's get to some Q and A. Oh, Q and A. Oh, Q and A. Uh, small group tonight. Um, one last thing. So I, I, people know I've been dealing some uh, ongoing uh, fatigue issues and stuff. I got some energy today. Now, what I did is I decades ago. I learned this from my friend. Will it focus? Come on. Yeah, all right. Was well, it going to focus? Come on. He said, eh, I guess not. Anyway, so um, I got a little steamer, mister, and I put this in eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is, uh, it's a, you know, it's from a plant. It's an oil, essential oil, and it's got a lot of uh, antiviral properties. So this is pissing me off. Come on. Oh, well. So you can look it up. Eucalyptus, antiviral properties. Decades ago, a couple of decades ago, um, a couple of de decades ago, uh, I was pretty sick, a flu. So my friend had a steam room of eucalyptus. So I went in there for an hour and it just wiped it all out. It was unbelievable. And I felt fantastic for a few days and never got the flu. So you may want to check that out. It's good stuff. All right. That's it. So let's just jump into some Q and A. All right, all right. What's going on? What's going on? Hold on. Cheers. Welcome. Hey, how are you? Hoi. Hope you're well. Chrome Chef. How are you? Good. 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 Um. Let's see. Sound cut. All right. Hey, Steph, I'm going to start your Webstack course. My dream is to become an entrepreneur, not necessarily freelance. Once I've down, done your full course, what steps should I take? Appreciate any advice. Watch my previous YouTube videos. I go over that quite a few times. You build a site, number one. Then you do two to three contracts for some local small business, nonprofit. Uh, for free even, little things, just to get your hands dirty. And then from there, you'll be in a good position. The camera, the camera looks cinematic. Yeah, I use cinema cameras, that's why. Volume gone, okay, okay, we got back. Kevin can hear me. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I hope everything is cool with you. I hope the floor is good. I'm back. Hey, Steph, I'm a computer engineer with two years of game development experience working at a startup company. But want to go for web because... Gabe Dev is Gabe Game Dev is Taff. What should I do? Uh, okay, so it should be pretty easy. If you learn the web stack, HTML5, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, then pick a backend language like uh, JavaScript on the backend or PHP or C sharp. Depends. If you want to work in enterprise, you got to go C sharp.net or Java. If you want to work for small work with small business freelance. Um, uh, web dev because again it is tough if you want to go freelance I would uh, be doing PHP web stack but it's all good it's all good could you repeat I think I did okay good 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 evening from Alberta Talib is a smart guy he is he is Ruby you're back <laughs> okay good loud and clear okay okay so we got all this sup sup I'm good man how are you the best Boca game returns. Yep, I got the best Boca game in 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 the uh, in the. Well, I got the best Boca in the game. Look at that. 
Look how crazy blurry my hand is. And, uh, now I got dual cameras. Is this going to work for me? Get the get the hand. Oh well. Not so good the bulk of tonight. We're having problems. Hey Stefan, I just turned 17. Going to start school in a few weeks, and I'm in I'm in the Middle East. Would get a would getting a front end do better as a, as a startup or back end? You want to do full stack if you want to get into uh, the game because you have a wider range of tools there. It's like putting in many fishing lines in the water. You don't have to be like a super expert, but if you do a little backend stuff, a little CRUD, which is a database interaction between a website and a database, you'll be much more marketable. Will be, will, will be any QA in this live stream? Yeah, we're doing it now. Fail ITS 303 Python exam today. I wasn't ready, but the boot camp has thrown us at deep water. 90% are failed in the group. Still, it is, still it's demotivating. Sounds like you got a crappy boot camp there. Sorry, guy. You know, you should be learning. Uh, but, you know, keep working at it. Don't give up. You know, trust me, it's worth it. You'll get it. You'll get it. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'll go Steph covers that topic often. Recap, learn fundamentals like his courses, no more, then do a couple usually free sites, projects and for someone else. So uh, then go to freelance. All right, that's it. That's it. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Reading Anti-Fragile now. Great suggestion. Curious, why programming, not IT? What made you go down the programming path? I love your programs and book suggestions. I appreciate that. Cool. I went down the programming path because I like to create things uh, personally. And I think that's a more solid profession. Creators, um, they're both good, by the way. IT is fine. But coding and creating things, I think, is the most valuable. But I also I like to create. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm too fat. What should I do? Well, if you're too fat, <laughs> if too fat, if that's real, uh, I would, you know, you got to just start cleaning up your diet. Losing weight is 95% diet, 5-10% uh, exercise. And just get sugary drinks out of your water, sugar, uh, chips, garbage food. That will help a lot just there. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. Watching from Africa, what do you think about Canadian Express program as a developer? I have three years experience, want to migrate to Canada. Well, you contact them. I don't know what this criteria is, but since you're already a programmer, that would probably open up a lot of doors. If you can speak French, you can come to French Quebec, French Canada, which is Quebec. If you can't speak French, you go to Ontario or BC or Alberta, which is the English part of Canada. It's so tight to work in a fresh startup company. I try to write all the code and getting minimum wage. Well, if it's your first gig, your first job, just consider it your training, you know? You gotta pay your dues, by the way. Every, you know, some people they expect they're gonna get their first job, they're gonna make 150,000 a year. Doesn't work that way. You gotta, you know, you gotta earn some skills. When you have the skills, then you can start making the big money. Hello, I hope everything is well. Books are for boomers. Ah, well, maybe. Sometimes, sometimes a book can be better. Uh, because if you if it's if it's more theoretical discussion, a book is can be better because you can outline you can underline areas, circle areas. Depends. Sometimes the printed word is best for communication. Sometimes it's video. Sometimes it's audio. Sometimes it's books. You know. Well, by the printed word. Uh, there is a guy, Thomas DeLauer, on YouTube that has an incredible channel for losing weight. There you go. I see many people out there. Dude, I'm from Toledo. Uh, I got fatigue too. Need uppers. No, you got to get in shape. You got to start uh, drinking water. Make sure you drink enough water. Uh, make sure you're eating good food. Uh, stay. I, I hate taking pills and medications, you know. So I, I would advise against that. Let's see if this eucalyptus thing will get in. Come on, see if we can get it this time. Probably won't happen. 
for some, my, this autofocus, sometimes it gets it very well. And sometimes it just doesn't want to work. It's weird. I guess it's not. Uh, pink Himalayan salt water gives me energy and great for cleansing the gut. Yeah, pink Himalayan salt is very good. Sea salt is also good. Natural sea salt. Um, a nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast. It's fantastic health, natural healthy food. Like I'll take supplements, but I prefer getting vitamins from natural foods. Because usually the food, the vitamins, the they require um, supporting ingredients, if you will. I was taught that decades ago from Dr. Yu. He said, better to take vitamins from the food. So, But if you can, not sometimes you can use supplements as well. Yes, eucalyptus is good, has good herbal properties. It does indeed, it does indeed. Um, I've been dealing with suffering for weeks, but months now. So I did that steam room. I was good 45 minutes or so doing the, and I feel really good today. Uh, I don't know if it's just a fluke or what, but if you if you got like head cold or a throat infection or lungs or whatever, do a eucalyptus steam. Go, you can go to a eucalyptus, eucalyptus steam room in some gym somewhere, sit in there for like a 45 minutes an hour, breathe in. Wim Hof, breathe it, you know. And uh, you're going to bring in all that antiviral eucalyptus goodness through your body. And it will start attacking all the Germans. Good evening. Good evening. Hope everything is well. How are we doing in there every time? All right. I'm currently looking for my first job. And I'm feeling anxious hearing about layoffs. It seems like most positions being cut are in mid marketing, high HR, etc. Not coded. Lots on this. Yeah, there's a big lack of talent in the coding world. You can't go wrong being a coder. Um, exactly. Uh, so don't worry about it. Just, you know, there's plenty of jobs. You know, uh, coders, once they've shown they got some skill, they got it's easy time to get a job. The first job's hard to get typically, but once you got once you're in, you're in. That's why I try to get people in the door as quickly as possible. Just a quick aside. I have uh, a, uh, where is it here? Let me go back here. I have a uh, Discord server. I invite you to take a look. It's pretty packed, over two and a half thousand people. Uh, so link is below. Just join, join. You can continue the conversation when the stream is over. So yeah, you can check that out. The Discord channel below. All right, what's there? Um, what are your tips to start your own business after learning web stack? Oh, look into my back catalog on YouTube. Um, I've talked about this. Uh, I'll give you one tip though. You have to become domain uh, knowledgeable. Um, you learn software so that you understand your opportunities, what you can do with the software. And then once you, with that, then you start going into, I don't know, whatever it is. I'll, let's say you become, you go work at coffee shops. And you find out coffee shops, they could use this type of software. Or you're working, working with accountants, uh, bookkeepers. You know, ah, you know, bookkeepers could use this kind of uh, software. That's a domain. You know, book, coffee shop is a domain. Bookkeeper accounting is a domain. I don't know, plumbing is a domain. And so if you have domain knowledge, you'll be able to figure out opportunities where you could use software to help those types of businesses. That's how you do it. Is 35 too old to become an entrepreneur? No, not necessarily. It depends on how many dependents you have and so forth. But you know, it's a skill. Being an entrepreneur, like anything else, it's a skill. And you have to uh, give it time to develop. So you don't want to go crazy and say, okay, I'm going to quit my job and throw a quarter million dollars into this business. And, uh, and I got to get it going in six months. That's like crazy. Don't do that. You got to slowly... Starting a business and building a business is kind of like walking on a lake that's just frozen over in the beginning of winter. I don't know if that reference will work for everybody there. You got to be very careful because you know you don't know where the where the ice might crack. Same thing with business. You got to go slowly until you figure out. Ah, oh, here this works. This is the business model. Then you go forward with it. Uh, 
I get a job on system analyst. What does the job do? I get a job. I don't understand your question. Hey, Steph, is being 38, 39 more difficult to get into the web dev workforce? It feels like it's a young person's game. Hope I'm wrong. You can get in. You're not too old there for sure. Um, you know, you, you might have some difficulty with startups and stuff, but you know, I, I know people who got jobs in their, in their mid forties. I know people who got new jobs in their fifties, so you should be okay. I'm language agnostic, able to learn a language one to two weeks max, but I always struggle to learn CSS, HTML. Huh, that's interesting. CSS is just a badly, a badly implemented language, in my humble opinion. They got a little bit too cute for themselves. They got a little bit too uh, complex. CSS is very powerful, don't get me wrong, you can do a lot with it, but it's got very complex hierarchies and if you don't understand those hierarchies well and but even if you do it's not uncommon for you to um to, to have trouble with your code because of hierarchical conflicts and anyway, i talk about that in my course links below um stefan python course great i appreciate that thank you thank you i've read the the webpack docs up to the development page, but I think I'm not quite comfortable with it. Should I continue reading the rest or pick up, pick it up as needed? You should be writing code now. Write code, write code, write code, Muhammad. Conceptual understanding comes through application. I know I made that mistake in the past as well, where I figured I would understand the theory, and when I understood the theory, I could go do the practical. It's, it's the opposite. You should learn a little theory in the beginning, just so you can get up and running, and then you should be writing code, because the more code you write, the more of the theory will become understandable. Hello, hey, how are you, man? I hope everything is well. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Steph, I need to talk to you. How can I reach out to you? I have very important questions about career advice, decisions making. Um, people have been asking to be able to consult with me. Like, I have a mentoring program. You go below unclesteph.com. And if you're interested in my mentoring program, you can set up a call and you can, you can talk with me about the program. But if you want general advice, I've had several people ask me just in the last week, maybe I'll set up something where you can just um, uh, book me for like 15 minutes for career talk. Let me know if you're interested in that. Another dev on YouTube spoke about the importance of building a blog, show your expertise and build an audience. But uh, then it becomes easier to gain clients. What are your thoughts? Yeah, building a blog for sure, building a site uh, maybe a little bit of expertise showing, but what they really want to see is you having done projects for other people. That's why I have the uh, the process that I map out. Uh, I wish I had more coding friends. Any advices for being less lonely in my coding web dev journey? Hey, Greek Geek Viking. Part of the uh, the mentoring program. Yeah, I did you join the Discord? You should join, you should, you should join the Discord right here. All right, we just have people joining. Uh, yeah, I should join the Discord. There's two and a half thousand people. It's pretty active. And uh, Matthew's on there, several other people on there. A good group. You can uh, share your journey with them, all level of developers on there. So join the Discord. Link is below. All right. Good question. Hey, Steph, I'm from the USA. I need to talk. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, uh... I just want to say I signed up to the Lifetime Access to Uncle Steph's mentoring program after an amazing conversation with him this morning. Ah, anyone anyone that is on the fence, this is a must do. I appreciate that, Mark. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, the mentoring program is something relatively new for me. I started about two years ago. I've been refining it and expanding it based on the needs of the group. Um, it's very different from any other boot camp. It's open-ended, meaning you can join what you want, and there's no end date. So whether it takes you three months to complete JavaScript or two months, it's fine. You have bi-weekly live coaching sessions with me via Zoom. You can ask me questions. There's a whole bunch of other benefits in there. The whole point of the program is to turn you into, pro to turn you into professional coders as quickly as possible. How long it takes? Some people do in three months. Other people can take a year. It's up to you. Depends on your efforts. How much can a senior front-end developer make maximum? 
six figures, um, low six figures, 150, 200, 250 maybe. Depends on if you're exceptionally talented, maybe more. Most people, and it depends where you live in the world. As I talked about before, you know, salaries in New York City is going to be different from salaries in, um, I don't know, Mexico City. The cost of living, you know. Maybe Mexico City is not a great example. But, you know, small town, big town. So you have to, you got to always look at salaries rel relative to where you happen to be living in the world in geographically. Uh, although the best case scenario is to live in an inexpensive part of the world and have contracts or jobs in areas where they do pay a lot more for their talent. But they also know that too, so they're going to negotiate with you. At the end of the day, the best investment is to invest in yourself. Make sure that uh, up your skills all the time, up your skills, up your skills. But that doesn't mean become caught in tutorial hell. Upping your skills once you get going is means doing projects and then stretching your wings a little bit and do projects and technologies that you're not necessarily too familiar with. So you learn stuff on the fly. Yeah. Hello, we are happy to see you in Rwanda. Hey, well, thanks for joining the stream. That's what I like about this whole thing. I get to talk to people um, uh, all over the place. Most most people, most people on Quora or Reddit say that in game development, pays are terrible compared to web development due to supply and demand. What is your opinion? I haven't done an exhaustive exhaustive study, but here's a a basic rule to life: if something is perceived as fun. Um, it is uh, uh, it's less valuable typically because more people want to get into it, even if it's hard. If something is perceived as difficult or boring or hard, uh, then its value shoots up. And there's also just a slow, so, so games seem fun. I want to make games. It seems fun. I have friends in the game and there's two friends in the gaming industry for years. Very One guy's very high up. And it is fun. But... It's also uh, a very niche, it's a niche, it's a niche industry, right? For every game developer job, there's probably, I don't know, 10,000 web developer jobs. So, you know, supply and demand. I finally caught the Grandmaster live. Hey, appreciate that. Uh, thanks for all your, for all you do stuff. Your videos keep me motivated to keep going with Python and Django, hopefully to make a career change eventually. Hey, keep doing it, man. Even just 20 minutes a day will make make a lot of progress, you, you'll see. Random question. What age did you start programming? I started programming in 1994. So I was in, uh, well, publicly I'm 169 years old. So I don't want to be Rumpelstiltskin here and reveal my true age. But I was pretty young. Uh, random questions. What age did you start? Okay, I got that one. Do back-end developers make more than front-end with with more than five years' experience? It depends. depends. A lot of it depends on you. It depends what type of front-end you're doing. If you're doing really complex React or Vue or something, it might make a difference. I don't know. Hey, Steph, you should visit us someday. Where, where are you? Jeffrey Epstein, where do you live? Hi, Steph. First time catching you live, just landed my first dev job at 35. Hey, there you go. Double guns, man. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. Congrats. See? 35 years old. Uh, now, man, I'm changing careers from being a chef to web dev, not too old at all. Chrome Chef, actually, guy in our uh, my mentoring group, Matthew, that's what he was a chef. He just landed his first job well, six months ago as a dev. And uh, he's doing very well, double the salary from a chef. So we have chefs in the group. Most viruses, most viruses can't tolerate hate, heat, which is why we get fears. Hot steam baths and hot showers do seem to help, perhaps partly for this reason. Could be. I don't dispute that. But I, I know that for sure that eucalyptus does have antiviral properties. And I've done hot steams when I'm sick. But hot steams with eucalyptus? All right. CSS is a configuration configuration file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta write very you gotta be very organized with your CSS because it can as I said, the biggest thing that trips people up 
even experienced people is the cascade because the cascade is so precise it's a hierarchy in css and that it, you may write your code thinking ah this rule here is going to work but because of the cascade the hierarchy some other rule will take precedence over this rule and you're like why isn't this working it's because you get this other rule that's overriding it uh, if you don't understand do my css course um Thanks for all you do, Uncle Steph. You're helping a lot of newbies like me find the right path and cut out all the conflicting advice from elsewhere. There's so much info out there. Well, that's it. Today, we live in a golden time where there's literally unlimited information. That's why I think universities are going to have more and more problems because the big advantage that universities had back in the day is that they had libraries. They had libraries full of books. And that was one of their big advantages. You would go to like you would go to schools that had great libraries, great teachers, and great libraries. Now these libraries are whatever, right? The information is out there. Uh, it's kind of like newspapers. Newspapers they got killed by Google and the and Facebook and the web in general because and magazines because they they forgot why the reason why newspapers. If you look at the history, why they became so dominant because newspaper. In the printing press, well, newspapers were the cheapest and quickest way to get information out to the masses. That was their technological advantage. That's why they, they grew so powerful. But when the web came about, newspapers were, they forgot. They, 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 didn't, they didn't remember why they were so powerful. And a new technology, the web, came by and replaced them, you know. And that's why they got decimated. Um, same thing, I think, it's going to happen with universities. Nothing against universities necessarily, but I think there's always going to be universities, but I think uh, people are realizing now that all, a lot of this information is out there, but here's the problem, filtering. Filtering is difficult, meaning there's so much information. What's, what do you, how do you know what's good or bad? How do you know um, what's good for you, you know? And uh, so it's, it's a big job. So my, my job, I have two jobs actually as a teacher. Number one is to simplify. And number two is to filter out all the unnecessary. Because if, if I just taught 10% of what I did, I have done or known, or no, you'd have to be in course for, for a long time. You, you would be in for years. It's because I've been doing this for 28 years. But you don't need to. That's the key. You know, it's like a great musician doesn't know every song by heart. A great musician knows how to read and write music. They know timing and keys and, and, and note progressions and blah, 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 blah. And uh, then they can learn any song they need to learn uh, as they go. And that's how developers work too. Developers on the job will just learn things as they go. Once you have your fundamentals down, it's not that difficult. There we go. Small group tonight, 67, 62. I, will, I want to learn PHP after I learned JavaScript a little while. Uh, is there anything PHP can do that JavaScript can't? They're all pretty good. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. I think you'll find PHP on the back end easier to work with. Oh, appreciate the super chat. Coffee on Matt Duffy. I don't drink coffee today, but uh, I don't know. Perrier on Matt Duffy. Since I've been ill, I've been cutting out all my coffee. Thanks, Steph. We'll join the Discord now. Really nice mentoring program, everyone. Worth it to join. I appreciate it. Yeah, we got a, a few mentoring. Is Uncle Steph retired? I was fortunate uh, back in the day. I was able to basically go into semi-retirement long time ago <laughs> i still do stuff but i do i'm fortunate enough where i can do what i want i do this because it's fun and uh for me business is a, it's a strategy game it's a strategy game i rather work on my business than play video games or watch movies or do tv uh watch tv or you know don't get me wrong i like good movies and stuff but so i i'm again you don't have to make a fifty million dollars to be able to be financially independent. You can do it. Just I teach that strategy I've talked about before. 
you get into the coding position, you start making that extra cash, you live below your means, you start investing smartly in diversified funds. And uh, in, in a few short years, you find yourself uh, on track to an easygoing lifestyle. So yeah, but I won't get into it here. Um, what are your thoughts on COBOL, Worth Learning 2022? There's jobs. I would just play around with COBOL programming, see if you like that kind of stuff. There's all these different types of coding, by the way. COBOL is its own beast. It's a very it's a particular type of coding. Web stack is a totally different game. AI, very different. IoT, very different. Game engine development, very different. So they're all good. You know, check the local job opportunities. See if you like that kind of coding before investing, you know. Oh, by the way, uh, how's the sound today? Sound good? Sound pretty clear? I got off camera some, uh, some. Uh, I guess you can see it here. Part of the panel here is there to uh, buffer the sound a bit. All right, how are we doing for time? Do you think mentors can accelerate the learning curve? Well, yeah, 1,000%. Of course, I'm biased. I have a mentoring program, unclesteph.com. Links below. Yeah, yeah, the mentor will save you from crashing into brick walls, save, save you from driving over cliffs, metaphorically, of course, and will direct you, will save you a lot of time. What I try to do in my mentoring program is I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm transferring my uh, decades of uh, experience in code and business and life in general to people. That's why, for example, I saw in my mentoring program, I saw people that had some Communication problems. They need to work on their communication skills. So I put out a course uh, that would help them with that. It's called Lizard Wizard. It's also part of it's available to the public. I actually have a free uh, email sequence. It's a training program based on Lizard Lore. It's called uh, Lizard Wizard Komodo. It's fun. It's a you get, you get an email every day. And in that email, there's a task. And each task is designed to... Uh, train your lizard brain in a positive way. That's free. Check it out. Uncle Steph Consultancy Agency. Yeah, I get asked for consulting all the time. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. 100%. Now you're 172. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's true. The strange thing is when you hit 169, you stop aging. That's it. It's a you stop right there. So I'm still 169. I forgot so much of CSS property. Should I be worried about? No, don't worry about it. That's why you have the god Google. Google is your friend. You just Google it up and you find it. Principles is what matters. Principles. Memorization, a parrot can memorize things. They're not they're not going to be good coders, parrots, you know. Uh, you don't need to memorize. It's much more about concepts. Hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a stream in a while. I hope everything is good. Uh, small kin fun. She's uh, suffering in Hawaii. <laughs> Steph, you said you save aggressively before retiring. How much were you making when you saved 8% of your income? Um, it changed. It fluctuated over time, right? It fluctuated over time. But when you, you know... It's really true. You 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 learn in your twenties. Well, I say you learn in your twenties and your thirties, and in your forties and fifties. For most people, is the big earnings. For most people, I have some friends who are thirty-five and they're worth uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, but they're the exception. I always say play to the averages, meaning when you strategize your business, you strategize your your career path. Don't assume you're going to be the loser and don't assume you're going to be uh, the superstar. Assume you're going to be the average person. The averages are av the, the averages are the averages because it's average. So it's the average outcome. So assume that and plan accordingly. And if you do that, which is a little bit, requires just a little bit of patience initially um, and a little consistency, you'll be fine. It goes with health as well. You don't want to let yourself get 50 pounds or 100 pounds overweight. If you see you're 10, 15 pounds overweight, do it now. Take care of it now. 
because it's a lot easier to lose 10 pounds than 50 pounds. And uh, it's a lot less stressful to the body. And trust me, uh, when you invest in your health, when you're younger especially, it pays huge dividends as you get older. I'd rather be... Uh, I'd rather be healthy and poor than rich and sick. Now, if you can be rich and healthy, that's that's the best. Which programming language should we learn for back-end development? Depends what you want to do. If you want to freelance, PHP is king, JavaScript behind it. If you want to work for large organizations, it's probably going to be Java C Sharp. What do you think? What do you think of robo portfolio traders like Wellsimple? I've been losing a lot of money lately in these. Traders, 90% of traders lose money. Trading, as my uncle would say, is a mugs game. The world's most successful investor is Warren Buffett. And he buys stocks for years and years and years, if not forever. Buy, you're never going to beat the algorithms. Like, Why would you think that you would beat um, programs and software that have uh, unfair advantages in terms of trading? Why would you think you could beat people who work at these large banks where they got access to all kinds of information you don't have access to? Despite all that, if you're in an index fund, which is basically investing in a broad segment of the market, um, you will outperform 90% of the professional traders. So I don't believe in anything. That's just, just, that's just gambling. Uh, where was that, that post? Robo trading. And it's just gambling. It's like betting on the horses. It's, 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 you may get a few right, but 90% of people lose in that game. How are you? Hope everything is good. Potentially, if you're very good, potentially. Soft skills are hard. Yeah, that's why I put out the lizard wizard. Uh, yeah, very cool stuff. You are saving life of a lot of people and family. Oh, I'm glad I could help. Again, I'm just trying to save you. You can spend 10, 20 years trying to learn all this stuff or you can just listen to me and get ahead. Uh, Stefan Mischuk, even Lizard Wizard has dating statement. Yes, it does. I teach you the lizard dating techniques. Highly sought after. <laughs> they say health tech may advance so much Oh, let me just get that. that. That be able to crack fountain of you. What are your thoughts on this? Do you want to live forever? You know, one thing I noticed, I know about my life about 40 people who are now dead, mostly family members, much older. And I found that uh, when people hit about 80, a lot of them were just like, I'm ready to die. I'm kind of bored. And they had good lives, you know, most of them. I don't know. I think it's quality of life. I think it has to do with if you have your if your body is not falling apart. You know, it's, it's one thing about getting older, but it's another thing about having uh, a healthy body when you are older, and you get that by what you do now. So, get in shape. I know for some reason it's politically incorrect to say this, which is silly. Like the biggest killers: heart disease and cancers and diabetes and so many other things are related to not being in shape, you know? 80% of the people who died of COVID, 80%, 80, over 80%, they were overweight, you know? There's a reason why, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the thin countries, they had very low mortality rates, so Japan and Taiwan and uh, Hong Kong, China, and, 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 and fatter countries like UK and, 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 and uh, the US, they had a lot of more, a lot of issues because a lot more people overweight. Got to lose weight. Trust me, I've been there. I when I was young, I was because of a blood disease. I had, I they jacked me up with a lot of roids. I went up to two hundred and forty-five pounds when my fighting weight was like 190, 195. It took me a while to figure out how to get that weight off permanently. But uh, when you're heavy like that, babon. And what I noticed in my own life, uh, amongst people I know who are now dead. I noticed that uh, in order, the order in which people die, the fat smokers died first, then the fat people, then the smokers, then the thin people. This is a small sample group, about 40 people, give or take. 
And that was basically the case typically, with some exceptions. Yeah, long time no see. Yeah, well, whenever you're free, we're still there. We're always there. You're welcome to join. I hope everything is well with you. Uh, before I do your web stack course, should I do Lizard Wizard? Yes. Can you give me a summary of what is taught in the course? Go look at the page. It will give you a summary. Lizard Wizard will help you in every aspect of your life. It's a combination of a bunch of things. Stuff I learned in 30 years of martial arts. Stuff I learned in psychology in university. So I draw from authors like Robert Cialdini and Kahneman. Uh, my major in university was psychology. I'm not a psychologist though. And just life experience as well, business experience. So a lot of people find it super help helpful. In fact, in the mentoring group, the first course I have people do now is Lizard Wizard because it will help you learn more effectively. Um, yeah, let me just uh, grab this here. Again, you should join my Discord, link below. If you want to have conversations, you want to learn with uh, people, it's a mixed group, generally a younger crowd in their 20s. But there's some people in their 40s as well, 30s, 40s. A lot of conversations, lots of things you can get into. So I invite you to check that out, my Discord channel. It's free. It's a good group. Fairly well moderated. So, you you know, they're helpful. It's, uh, it's good stuff. For anyone looking to save for retirement, may I suggest a book called Richest Man in Babylon. It's old, but it's a great book on finances. There you go. I've never read it, but yeah. Check it out. How long did it take you to push the first version of Studio Web? Hmm. Some months. I don't forget how many months. Um, the first version of Studio Web, 11 years ago, is when I decided to come out of, for like a decade, I was, uh, I was the professional breakfast, brunch, and coffee guy, meaning I would just go to brunch and breakfast. After about a decade of doing that and other time-wasting things, I decided I wanted to get back into the game again. So I started developing, we started developing Studio Web, brought in some people, started developing Studio Web. And a couple of schools contacted us. We had a, some beta testers on there, about a thousand people. And then we, uh, we refined it to a certain extent. And then I had schools contact me, which I wasn't expecting necessarily. So the first version, the first iteration of Studio Web, we had uh, this concept of a group, but not a classroom, like a school classroom, concept of a group. So uh, I had it out there and a couple of schools contacted me, one in Ohio and one in uh, Tennessee, I think it was. And they say, hey, we'll just work in a classroom. I said, I guess I sure. So we had the group system. So, and that was the beginning of really learning the model, understanding the, the domain, meaning education. And uh, software uh, changed quite a bit based on the needs of the teachers. But yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I forget how long. It was in the months, it wasn't years. But it was very basic compared to where it is today. You know, you, you, you learn a lot in the first uh, three to five years when you set up a SaaS. It's not my first SaaS studio web. How do you connect with people in LinkedIn who have, a, who have your dream job? Hey, that's another thing. We've talked about that in other streams. In the mentor program, we talk about too, that too. Um, LinkedIn is a great way to start making connections, reaching out. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a job-oriented site, you know. It's, it's better if you're looking to get a coder job. It's better to build up your profile there than to build up your profile, say, on, uh, I don't know, Instagram or TikTok, you know. Uh, how are we doing? All right. Whoa, already an hour. Unbelievable. Time flies. All right, guys. Hey, Jamming Code. All right. I'm going to have to wrap this up because Uncle Steph is uh, needs to go do his eucalyptus steam training. So uh, I have a bit of energy today because I think because of eucalyptus. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you did enjoy the stream, please give me a thumbs if you haven't. And if you hated the streams, Give me two, two thumbs down. And uh, I, again, once again, I invite you to join the Discord. Uh, lots of activity. Oh, do we have new people join here? Yeah, there's something right here. Yo, yo, yo. So join the Discord. You can continue the conversation there. That's a good spot. That's about it. Thanks again. 
and we will see you soon. Uh, there you go. Well, actually, I like this comment here. One last comment. Having some savings is great, but I'd rather not be the richest man in a cemetery. You got to find a balance. You got to find a balance in life. You know, um, you don't want to wake up uh, at 65 having not saved anything. That's not a good place to be. So I'm teaching you how with coding, how you can fast track into a comfortable retirement. You can find yourself almost feeling you won't be retired unless you, you really do big, uh, but you can feel it feel as though you are because you have established yourself. You've taken a lot of stress off yourself within a few years, but that's another story. All right. Thanks for joining the stream. Cheers. Thank you.